going to look at screw heads, engraving screw heads. In particular, we're going to look at the screw heads on breech blocks of antique firearms, which is one of the most conspicuous places you see them. So we've got a selection of breech blocks for you. Here's a single barrel twig of about 1770. Uh, this is a very simple little uh, screw head engraved with just a few cuts. It'll take a few minutes to do it the most. Uh, but uh, that's a sort of typical of an early gun. There's not much decoration on there, as you can see, quite uh, sparse compared with what you're going to see now, which is a Blair and Sutherland double flint lock uh, of somewhat later era, probably about 1810. Um, that's got quite an elaborate screw head there. You can see that the, the petals are niched. This is a John Manton double flintlock from about the same period, 16 bore of 1807. You can see the daisy there and you can see the sunburst, classic sunburst in the, in the thumbnail bit which joins onto the barrel. Now we come to John Manton's brother Joseph and uh, an, an 1807 uh, flintlock converted to tube lock single barrel. This has got a slightly different screw. It doesn't fit very well and it looks as if it's a modern replacement but it isn't I don't think. Now we're on to a Samuel Nock double barreled percussion gun of about 1835. Uh, that picture is unusual because it shouldn't have the, the slot in the screw across ways but it's quite a nice and elaborate to pattern on the screw head there. Uh, we're getting there. Here we are, we've got now um, a Purdy uh, rifle, a Rook and Rabbit rifle of about 1837. Um, it, it looks slightly odd. Now we're into um, a French double percussion sporting gun of the mid 19th century. And that's got a Tudor rose on it. The rest of the gun is pretty plain, uh, except for the carved woodwork under the uh, under the wrist, which typically French guns had. Uh, and so now we're on to a Jackson patent, uh, mid mid 19th century again. This is a cent central fire gun, it was called. The uh, nipples line up with the centres of the barrel, and there's another daisy on there. Most of them are daisies, as you have seen. Uh, quite an elaborate gun. Now we're, I'm showing you some uh, screw heads that I have engraved. That one's a daisy. The, the, um, the, the veins in the centre of the petals are not at all typical. That's much more typical. Um, of, of a daisy. There's no centre on that one. They, they're all made out of commercial screws so that they all look a bit odd. That one's rather nice I think. It should have, it's, it's a bit asymmetric and it's not done properly but it should have a nice swirly pattern on it. There's another classic daisy with a centre on it. Um, again the big, big, rather over big screw slot in there from using commercial screws. Uh, another typical one again with the wrong kind of um, veins in the middle of the petals there but you'll see the similarity with some of the ones we've been looking at and here we are onto a Tudor rose a bit like the French one only a bit more elaborate uh, and you do see that occasionally I'm, I'm very fond of that too particular design. This is a much more difficult one to do because it's got a border on the edge that you mustn't uh, you mustn't destroy so it's quite difficult to do that one. Again a horrible slot in the middle of it spoils it. Uh, here's a little swirly one just for fun. I've, I've probably not seen one like that on a gun but I might have done. And another Tudor rose. This one I think is copied off a, off a modern Stephen Grant gun. I think I was given a screw to copy uh, to do and I, I copied it onto a head. There's another one well, that's a bit more typical of a, Tudor, a real Tudor rose. It's got the little leaflets between each petal at the edges. Again a, a nice design. There's a fun one, some hearts and that, that just looks ridiculous because the size of the slot through the middle. But um, there we are.
that's how it uh, that's how it turned out this i can't remember where i got this design from but it's real it came off so it came off a screw probably quite late in the 19th century probably uh, 1850 there's a, another version of it which is not so good and not so nice i obviously had two goes at doing that um, and presumably the, the one now when i'm doing these I do these at, when I'm doing demonstrations, the screw heads, because I can do them easily and there's no concentration required. And I can give them to children who enjoy having them. And I've made a series of little wooden blocks that I can mount them in so that they can take them away, um, which are quite popular, in fact, very popular. So that's a, a, a fun thing to do when you need to practice, is to get hold of some... Uh, second hand net, well some nettle, nettle fold screws off the eBay uh, and use them for trial you can see my other video of, of, of doing one of the daisies here's a little uh, exercise for the student so to speak which is a reverse um, stamp for stamping out um, the, the little marks that sometimes appeared on gun barrels so i found it rather difficult because you could only do lead with those and there's a little fish just for fun on copper that's a nice easy thing to engrave as well i mean the copper is easy to engrave you can have fun with the pattern that's it's quite a small pattern thank you very much i think that's uh, the end of what i've got to talk about